Okay, I'm going to talk you through some basics about fluids, identify some pretty common uh, equations that we're going to use, uh, and maybe talk a little bit of problem-solving strategy here with you. Um, just so that you're aware, the term fluids is in reference to a phase of matter that has the ability to flow. Um, most of the time people when they think fluids they think like liquids but it also does include gases and then things called plasmas which is hot ionized gases like what the Sun is made out of uh, and then things like liquid crystals which you have in many televisions. Okay? Um, one of the first things that you have to know uh, in terms of fluids is the term density which most of you have probably heard already um, density gets the symbol uh, rho okay and it looks like a P um, but it's really a fancy Greek letter P okay um, but the name of it is called rho right so if you look at the definition of density it's the mass per unit volume um, and if you look in um, your book uh, there's a page that has a whole bunch of different values for different materials that you're going to need when you go ahead and you answer your um, homework problems. Okay, um, But basic equation then is rho is equal to mass over volume. Um, generally in physics we're going to use kilograms per meters cubed. Okay, Now that means you know in chemistry you usually use like grams per um, a milliliter or grams per, per centimeter cubed and here we're going to use kilograms per meters cubed so just be aware of that okay so some of the values are going to seem a little odd um, something else that we talk about in here is specific gravity uh, which is the ratio of the density of that substance to the density of water at four degrees celsius um, Again, it's just a term that you need to be made aware of. Um, but something um, that we do need to talk about here is pressure. Um, pressure is the force per unit area. So if you look at the uh, formula here for it, it's a capital P, not a lowercase p, don't get it confused with rho, uh, is the force divided by the area. Now, units for that are usually newtons per meters squared, which is also known as a pascal. So just in case you see that, okay, it's the same thing as a newton per meter squared. Um, important things about pressure: in a fluid, a pressure uh, or a fluid can exert a pressure in all directions. Meaning, okay, inside of a pool, the pressure along um, the bottom middle of the pool is the same as the bottom along the side of the pool. Okay. Um, also, a fluid at rest exerts a pressure perpendicular to any surface. Okay, so it's 90 degrees to that particular surface. So here's a little derivation um, that's done. If we think about pressure as being the force per unit area, um, well, in a fluid, the force is the weight of that particular fluid. So that can be replaced with mg over a. Now the mass can also be replaced. If I go back up to our density equation and I bring volume to the other side, uh, or yeah, volume and multiply it up to the other side, uh, mass is then equal to density times volume. So I can replace mass with density times volume. Okay. Um, one thing that's kind of convenient is the volume of a fluid is really its area times its height. Okay, So you can replace that and now we can get rid of the areas and we've got another um, equation for pressure being rho hg or rho gh. Okay, Just like this. Pressure is rho gh. Um, Sometimes if you want to find out pressure differences, like say at different depths of the ocean, um, you can figure out the change in pressure. And the density of the water doesn't change, gravity doesn't change, but the height will change. So you use to find a delta P, a change in pressure, you just need the delta H at different depths. Okay. All right, so now some other basic terms that we need to know. Um, something called atmospheric pressure, which oftentimes gets the symbol PA or sometimes P0. Um, this is the pressure created simply by the Earth's atmosphere and all the air that's above us. Okay. Um, just so you know, at sea level, uh, 1.013 times 10 to the fifth newtons per meter, that is also known as one atmosphere. Okay. Um, and then I've given you a couple conversions here, which maybe you remember from chemistry, maybe you don't. Um, one that you do need to be aware of that I forgot to put on here is that one atmosphere is 760 um, millimeters of mercury or 760 tor. 
and they're the same. Okay. Um, in case you don't remember that, uh, somewhere in the in chapter 10 in your book um, has a list of conversions for you. Um, something else uh, that you need to know is a gauge pressure. A gauge pressure is the pressure above and beyond atmospheric pressure. So if you're sitting in a pool, you're feeling the pressure of all the air on top of you. When you go, say, into the pool and you're under the water, now you feel the pressure of the air on top of you and water on top of you. So this would be a situation where, okay, you've got the atmospheric pressure of the air, and then you'd have the gauge pressure of the water on top of you as well. So oftentimes what you get if you want to solve for something called the absolute pressure is you have to take the atmospheric pressure and add the pressure caused by whichever fluid you are in. Most of the time it's like water. Okay. All right, and last but not least, on this particular video, we have to talk about Pascal's principle, which just says if an external pressure is applied to a confined liquid, the pressure at every point within the fluid increases by that amount. And this is the way like hydraulic lifts work. If you increase the pressure, um, you you get that same pressure out. Okay, so the pressure out equals the pressure in. Um, you can replace that with the force out is equal to the area out. Or, I'm sorry, the force out over the area out is equal to the force in over the area in. Um, this is oftentimes a way to um, you know, get a somewhat um, bigger force out in this case. Um, if you do a little rearranging of the equation, um, this particular side, F out over F in, is also known as the mechanical advantage. The more force that you can get out compared to the amount of force that you put in um, indicates, you know, well, I can lift something much, much larger if I'm able to um, get a bigger force out of whatever force I put in. So, like, um, you know, like the way like a jack works like you put your foot on top of the jack and you can lift a car well if you just try to lift the car by yourself unless you're very 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 strong you're going to exert a much greater force than you would have to exert on say the jack itself okay so that's something that's going to pop up as well all right um if you look in page 261 that's where you're going to find those conversions and it talks about a few different types of gauges just in case you're interested okay